All right, so the wood duck has been drying for about a week to a week and a half. It's completely dry and we're going to come in and start removing the carding and we're going to prep it for the paint booth. So we're going to start with the wing. We're going to remove the pins and paper clips and the tape. If you take this off too early during the drying process, some of your feathers might distort. So it's important to keep this on until the bird's completely dry. Using masking tape to card these out is very easy to do and they, it comes off very easily. All right, so that wing, everything's been taken off. We'll start on this foot. We're just going to remove the tape. That one doesn't have any. Remove this pin. We'll work on the tail. All right, so all the tape's been removed. Now we need to cut this wire and we'll cut this string and then we'll start masking the bird off. So we're gonna take a scissors and we're gonna snip this string off that we had hanging out from when we sewn the bird up. And now we need to do something with this tail wire. You could try to pull it out, but sometimes it gets stuck in the liquid nails and you can loosen your tail. So we're actually going to come underneath it and snip it off right near the base of the tail, but we're gonna keep part of it attached just to help anchor that tail in. Tip the bird upside down. Part some of the tail feathers here. It's gonna come underneath. Be careful that you don't cut through your tail. Just snip that right off. So now all of the tape and the carding has been removed from the wood duck. I like to take a, our little feather duster and dust the bird off. As it's drying, it accumulates some dust from being in the shop environment. So we'll just take this little uh, barber's brush and brush with the feathers and just remove any dust. You could take an air gun as well and carefully blow everything off. All right, so now the bird is ready to do our foot repairs and to mask it off for the paint booth. Now, if you remember from earlier in the course, this wood duck had a, a bullet hole in its toe. So we need to repair that with epoxy. But before we repair it, we're gonna put our masking on it. So now we're gonna mask off the feet for painting. And the reason why we wanna mask the legs and the feet off is during the painting process there's going to be a lot of paint getting sprayed around and if we don't mask it that's going to get all over the feathers so we need to create a barrier between our paint and these feathers we're going to use freezer paper to do that we're just going to start cutting a piece cut this about in half we'll bring it over and kind of rough lay it in here and then we'll cut a notch so we can slide our leg into it about halfway through. Make a slightly bigger opening here so we can wrap this around our leg. And then we'll feed this up right like this. And we'll come right up. And then we'll tape this in place with masking tape. This is why you want to make sure your bird's completely dry before you start doing the masking and painting. You don't want to uh, misalign any feathers. So if it's good and dry, your feathers stay right where they are, right where they're supposed to be. Now we have a lot of this excess overhang. Some of this we can cut and the rest will pin up. So we will go ahead and remove about half of this. 
just is not needed. And then we'll get a pin and we'll pin this in place. We'll fold this up over the wing. Then we'll just pin this freezer paper right in place. You want to make sure that you have your freezer paper so it's none of it's covering the leg itself. Otherwise you'll have a line when you start painting on it and when you remove it, you'll see you didn't get the paint completely over the leg. So you want to make sure that your entire leg is exposed. We're just taping around this opening that we made just to make sure there's no room for any paint to accidentally spill through. So this side is masked off. And I'm actually going to take my scissors and cut around the head for two reasons. One, I don't want this freezer paper to be laying on the crown. And two, if you would have made any mistakes and chipped any of the paint on the bill, now would be the time when you'd come in and clean that up with your airbrushes as well. Also, any touch up around the eyes that may be needed. So now we'll flip the bread around and repeat the process on the back side. So we have the back side masked off. Now we need to connect the two in the center where the two pieces of freezer paper meet along the belly. So we're going to carefully fold up the back side and we're going to layer the, the front side over that and tape the seam line. That's going to make it so that no paint can get through our seam line. Repeat that process as we start moving down towards the tail. Basically, the entire objective here is to keep the, the paint off the bird. That's why we're going through this whole masking process. Perfect. I'm just going to rotate this here. So if you zoom in on this leg, Right here, you can see the bullet hole, and we're going to fix that with epoxy sculpt. It's a two-part mix of epoxy, mixed 50-50. I'm going to go ahead and put gloves on. It's always important that whenever you work with any chemicals that you wear the proper safety materials. In this case, we're going to be wearing gloves. You don't want to get those chemicals on your hands. We don't need very much. It's going to take about a pea size of each amount. And this is mixed 50-50, so you want to make sure both parts are equal. And then we'll just start mixing this together. You want to make sure this is completely mixed up and you don't see streaks of one color or the other in your epoxy, just one solid color. All right, so we just mixed up our epoxy and it's important that you change your gloves because there's unmixed up epoxy on these gloves, part A and part B that's not completely mixed. So you don't want to be running around with those on, getting on your mount, any unmixed up epoxy. So we're going to switch over to a new pair of gloves. And then to smooth this epoxy out, we're going to be using a small amount of hot water. That's going to help to blend it in. We're going to take a small amount of this epoxy. We're just going to be using a modeling tool. And we're just going to start to lay this right up on that shot hole. This is kind of a shot hole slash strange growth that this wood duck had. And we're just going to put some of this right on there. Take a small amount of water, dip off the excess onto a paper towel. We're going to start to blend this right in. You can also use your finger to do this as well. Basically, we're just kind of matching up to the toe around it, smoothing and blending everything in as we go. And then we'll make little lines to match up the toe. One of the benefits that we have with this particular repair is it's right on one of the knuckles of the toe. So we'll be able to hide this with a small amount of 
black brown paint right right on the toe joint so that's going to work out very nicely to help hide this it's going to smooth it in making sure it's nice and smooth everywhere you don't want to see any epoxy lines on your where the epoxy meets the toes blend everything together all right now we're going to take a a pin we're going to use a little bit of a euro pin dampen the tip drip off the excess and we're going to make some lines that match up with the other lines that are on the foot repeat that on the other side then we're going to take our slightly damp paper towel and we are going to Press it into the epoxy lightly just to blend in those lines that we made and also give a little bit of texture. All right, so that repair is complete. And at this time, we're going to look around at the rest of the toes and make sure there's no holes from our injection or any other shot holes. And if there is, we'll fill those with epoxy. A lot of times you'll see holes on the back of the foot where you ran your wire through that's a pretty common area and there is a small hole right here where we ran our wire through so we'll go ahead and put a small amount of epoxy there as well just enough to blend it Paper towel and give that some texture. Now I'm not seeing a lot of needle holes from where we injected. When we spray it with our white paint, that's going to expose any holes that we might have missed and we can fix those quickly at that time. Otherwise, I think that this bird is now ready to head into the paint booth to start our uh, painting process. But before we head in there, I want to come over and talk a little bit about the paints that we're going to be using. So we're going to be using lacquer based paints. Uh, and the paints that we're going to be using is super high white. This is a poly transpar paint. We're going to be using blending brown, another poly transpar paint. We're going to be using wood duck yellow. This is a life tone paint. And then we're going to use base coat seether to go over the top of our paint to give the foot some protection. We'll also be using a Pache H1 airbrush and these color jars. We have a whole setup of these down in our paint booth. You can get by with one, but I suggest having multiple ones to make your job easier. So the first color that we're going to put on the foot is going to be the super high white. Then we'll go ahead and we'll spray the entire foot the leg, the shank, everything. And then at that time, we'll be able to see any pinholes that we might have missed and we'll fix that up. The next paint that we're gonna lay onto it is the wood duck yellow. We'll spray that over the entire foot and the leg. And then the last color that we're gonna be using is our blending brown. And we'll use this to paint our knuckle areas and the pads and use and we'll do some angle spraying on the different parts of the legs to give it some action and blend everything in. And then once we have everything painted the way we want, we'll take our base coat sealer and we'll spray over the entire foot. We'll probably give it two to three coats. And what that's gonna do is if someone comes up to the foot and starts flecking it like this, the paint won't chip off as easily. If you don't put any protection on it, if someone would come up and they'd start flicking on it, it'd take your paint right off. So you have to have some sort of a coating over it to protect your paint job. This would also be the time when we'd come around and look for any nicks that we may have made on the, the bill of the bird, as well as looking around the eyes, make sure everything is, uh, make sure there's no little bits of white or clay sticking out, and which we'd clean off and paint. Sometimes you might have a little bit of white feathering sticking out. You can paint that if you like, some dark brown colors to blend it. So that's pretty much all that there is to painting it. So we will head down to the paint booth. 
It's also very important that w when you're painting your wood duck feet that you have a lot of good foot reference available. Google is a great spot to go for that. Uh, you also can get a lot of these good books. There's a lot of reference books. I like this duck hunting book for one of the simple reasons is it gives a really good description on the color of wood duck feet. It also has some nice imagery in it. So make sure you have good reference available whenever you're doing any painting. Okay, now we're going to be applying our super hide white. We're going to be covering the entire leg and the toes on the wood duck. You want to give both of them 100% coverage. As you're doing this, you might see a few imperfections here and there. Things you might need to use a little bit of glue or even epoxy on to clean up. For example, if you had a injection hole yet, that would be something you could um, fix after your super hide white has dried a little bit. And as you can see, we're using this in a well ventilated area one of our industrial spray booths. If you don't have that, uh, doing this in a garage with the door open or even outside is a good option. This is the wood duck yellow. And again, we're covering all of the leg and the toes. You can see how we're spinning the bird and turning the airbrush at the same time as we're doing this. That way you can get it from every angle. When you're putting this on, you never want to flood it in any one area. You want to just get even coverage and then come back and hit it again. We're running our compressors at 90 PSI. You could run it anywhere between 40 and 90. If you're using a Pache H, you can use it at 90 and that will stop spitting. That's a little trick for you. Okay, now we're using our blending brown and we're just painting on the joints or the knuckles. You don't want to get this too harsh, just a little bit, you can always come back and hit it again. Think of it as accenting the, the knuckles or the joints on the toes. Now we're painting the webbing between the toes. See we're putting it on fairly heavy here. Again you want to avoid getting this on the toes. You're just going between the toes on the webbing. Okay, 
in the back side of the webbing. Putting a little bit of angle sprayed accent on the shank. It gives it some depth and some more detail. Again, we're painting the underside of the webbing in the entire foot. Now this is the foot that's on the base. Now we're using our top coat, which is the base coat sealer. Just like when we painted the bill, it's going to have a shine on it. And that's okay. Duck feet will obviously have a shine if they've just gotten out of the water. And that shine will dissipate after a week or two. By putting a fairly liberal amount of base coat sealer on, we're going to give the paint a lot of protection. It's also important to note that when you're applying your base coat sealer, you never want to flood it on. You're better to give it two to three light coats rather than one really heavy coat and letting it dry between those coats. That way your paint won't run and you won't have any runs of your base coat sealer. If you get too much of this on at one time, it can actually eat your paint. And this just shows the finished painted legs and feet. That base coat does a really good job. All right, so we have the bird all painted, the legs and the feet. Now what we need to do is remove the masking from the bird. And even though we put the base coat sealer on the foot, you still want to be careful when you're taking the masking off that you don't scratch it. We're going to cut right down to the base of the foot. Then we're going to carefully peel and separate the freezer paper and carefully pull it back away from the foot. Repeat that process on the back side. Remove this pin. Cut down, being careful you don't cut through any feathers, and that you don't scratch your leg with the scissors. Remove that. Put some of these feathers back in alignment that got slightly moved from painting. Check our tail. Kind of giving the bird a once over. Everything is looking very nice. Now we can go ahead and put the bird back on the base. So we'll bend our leg wire straight. Run it down through the hole that we had pre-drilled in. Check our alignment. Then we'll bend this wire up and then we'll take either a staple gun and staple this wire underneath or you could use uh, some strapping with screws. Either of those would work fine. We're gonna use our air stapler and just shoot a staple up underneath. And then you can go ahead and put a hanger on the back of this base. You can use an alligator hanger I'd recommend the H1002s. That's a good size for this. I'm just going to go ahead and take my duster. I'm just going to dust over it one more time, making sure that there's no borax dust or any corn cob grit. And this is a good time to look over 
feather alignment, if anything got disheveled from the freezer paper. Check out our crown. Take a step back, look at everything. All right, I think that looks perfect. This mount is now ready to either call the customer or go up on your wall for display. I want to thank you all for watching our course on our standing wood duck. Thank you.